Hi everybody, thanks for joining Create with D. Today I am live here a little early and I um, was, I'm real excited because I'm on vacation, but not really. I'm on vacation from Slater's Concrete, our family business, but um, I'm working um, lots of hours getting ready for a local stamp camp that's this Saturday. So, and something popped up family-wise, an opportunity to meet with family tonight, and so that's why I am live a little early. All right, so I have what I think is a fun technique, one I haven't seen too much of, and I'm calling it a stamp mashup um, technique. This is where we're going to take two different images that kind of coordinate or have the same feel and kind of make um, a different little card. Hi, Marge. Um, I had got inspiration from this from a watercolor photo that I had seen and my mind started going. They use butterflies and I thought um, I would try this dragonfly um, look here. So hopefully this works out. Okay, let's get started doing this stamp mashup technique, and it also uses the masking technique. All right, let me go ahead and bring in my um, grid paper here. All right, so I'm using some stamps that you guys may already have. These are um, two stamp sets that have been available for, um, I think, a couple of years now. One's Dragonfly Garden and the other one is Hydrangea Haven. And what I thought would work when I was playing around with the images, I thought the dragon um, image here and the flower image here were about the same um, shapes. All right, so let's get started on that. Whoops, let me just bring in the sample so that everyone can kind of see where we're going with it. All right, so for masking, well, and we're gonna use our blends as well. So what I wanna make sure is that I have it on the correct side. Let's see that, nope, that's wrong. So when I stamp it, I want it, to, um, so I'm gonna mask the dragonfly so when you're looking at the red rubber, it'll be on the left side. And I'm just using post-it notes here. I had an old pack and that's what I started with. And I wanted to show you that you can reuse them as well. And I'm going to mask off, when it's looking at me this way, the left side. I'm gonna use Memento Black ink. And we're going to ink up the dragonfly. And this is what we want to tell ourselves. Whoops, let me go this way. So I'm gonna ink that up. And I'm going to say, like just get yourself into this routine of saying mask off stamp. And the reason why we want to do that is that if you don't take it off and you ink up and you stamp, you're going to get a smear mark. So you can keep your post-it note the same one on or the same one that you use, just reposition it each time. And I did it three times, so on this particular card. So I'm gonna ink, remove, stamp. Had a little bit of smudge on there. And when it gets too icky, just grab another masking tape or post-it note or sticky note. And we're gonna mask, stamp, off, or ink, take it off and stamp. Okay, so there's the masking technique part. Um, many of us know how to do that. And then with the mashup part of it is we're going to take our second part of um, what we're going to combine. Again, I just kind of thought this kind of had the same shape and feel. And of course, you know, it's nature. So I'm taking this little bundle here and now I'm going to make that its other wing. And this one, there's no masking to it. We're just, we can just stamp right where we'd like it to be. And so now we've just created our own unique little 
um, artsy stamp thing. Again, this is something that I had seen on a print and I thought it was a fun technique. Um, let's go ahead and we'll color just one of the dragon flash but our flower kind of our mashups. And you can see here that I'm embracing all of my beautiful blend colors. And I was playing around with the color palette. And um, since we are in August, I thought that, um, you know, here's one that you could do for maybe the springtime or if you like these colors here. But I wanted to make one a little more darker colors. I kind of got the color inspiration from what you might find in Mums. So I'm using yellows, purples, and um, you know, and the dark red, which is the um, cherry cobbler. All right, so um, we'll go ahead, and I always kind of like starting with the lightest color, so I'm using the Highland Heather. I'm gonna call, just color the wings here first. I'm not gonna, again, show all of the wing coloring. We'll just kind of color one together so you can see what I did. So just pretty easy coloring. And then our blends, just so that, um, as a reminder, in case you haven't seen it for a while, the more that you go over an area, the darker and more um, vibrant that color gets. So whether you use just one of the colors or you bring in the darker one, I tend to use the, and so again, if we wanna highlight this a little more or darken it, you know, we can on just like giving it some dimension. And then I like coming back in with the lighter color, kind of blending that together. So you can do that for as light or as dark as what you'd like. And then for the, um, for our, um, oh goodness, what am I trying to say? The flowers here, I'm using dark Daffodil Delight, or no, this is dark, um, Mango Melody. In fact, I think I want to use the light. You do get the blends in pairs. And I just wanted to kind of show you how I did these flowers. So let me kind of just copy my color motif here, or the order that I did those in. And then for this one, what I did is I took um, the orange, which is the light Calypso Coral, and the fine tip in. And I kind of made a plus and then did a circle. So I did plus and a circle, plus and then a circle in the middle. And then you can kind of come back here with our mango and kind of blend those in a little more. Okay. And then I'm going to, um, next one I'm going to take is our, this is um, the light cherry cobbler. You can always start light and go darker with it but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do that same technique with the light and the dark. And put this over here. So this was very relaxing. I've made, um, we did this at our team meeting um, last Sunday on it. And, um, you know, kind of shared with um, the team on how to do that. And again, I'm just kind of making this is the darker um, cherry cobbler, or dark cherry cobbler, and just kind of did the plus sign on that. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our Highland Heather, start out with the lighter one. Because you know how in most flowers, that's darker in the center. Okay, and I know I don't have these colored in like super good, but um, we can look at my sample here in just a little bit. All right, and I think that I want to do just before, I want to get these a little more pronounced. So that's the nice thing with the blends. You just kind of come back over. All right, so that would be the look of the butterfly or the dragonfly mashup. But I think as you can see here, it really pops it by outlining it in blue. And you can do that with a blue tone or a gray tone. And I've got the light balmy blue and I'm using the wider tip on it and we're just going to make an outline around it and you don't have to you know be super precise or anything I'll go pr pretty fast just to show how it kind of blends in those different areas you know if you you can kind of lightly go over your coloring it's not going to affect it at all if you go outside the lines just bring it back in 
and don't be afraid of using the outline kind of look to it. And then I actually came in here and kind of filled in the background as well. All right, and then you can go back over and fill in any white spaces that you have. So what a difference that makes, I think, on it. And then the last thing that I did on the dragonfly and the flower mashup is I took my Wink Estella and just, you can just go over all of our areas here and it will just add a nice subtle little shimmer to it. So kind of let that hit the light. Hopefully you can see that I've got a little sparkle from Wink Estella on it. And then um, what I did from the, this is from the Dragonfly Gardens um, stamp set. This one is You Are an Inspiration. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about the difference between Memento Black and Stays On Black. Memento is for everyday stamping and for using with the blends, the stamping blends. Um, you need to use these two together because um, the um, alcohol in the blends will not um, interact with this, meaning that the black stays black and it won't blend and, and mess all up. If you would use the blends with the stays on, they're kind of both the same alcohol based, I think, or something like that and it starts to smear the, the blend. So um, Memento ink and the blends go hand in hand. Where stays on is I think the best and what most people use that for is with working with vellum and window sheets. And since I wanted to stamp You Are the Inspiration on vellum, I needed to switch out um, with the ink and use the stays on. And we'll get that. Here. So you are an inspiration. And I'll stamp that on some of the vellum. It's a little bit upside down. <laughs> and I'm using the dual um, oval punch. And let's see here, get my scissors. Get that kind of crop down just a little bit. I've got it going upside down. I just you know, that's what's great about keeping some of these scrap pieces. And I'll just get that lined up. You are an inspiration. And punch. Okay. And then um, what I did next is I used our glue dots. I'll go ahead and try to strategically place these so that I can come back and finish coloring my my mashup dragonfly flowers. And for the vellum, I don't want to see the, the glue behind it. And so I'm going to position the glue dot where I'm going to add a little rhinestones to the top of it. And then that covers up the glue dot and you don't see the adhesive on it. So put those here. That looks good that down and so see how you can see the glue dot coming through so just grab um, an embellishment of choice I've got some rhinestones here and I'm just going to and actually I've got them colored a little bit with the balmy blue so you can use your alcohol stamp and blend markers on your rhinestones and pearls anything you want to add color to and now that's going to go right over that glue dot and we'll give it an optical illusion that rhinestone on my fingers. And we'll just cover up where we put the glue dot. All right, so that's how I added a vellum piece to the cardstock where you don't see the glue. Let's see, um, Marge says, now she'll have to go through her stamps to see, yes, I know, because I was thinking, you know, if there's a bird and then we can use fall leaves on that or even mix and match different leaves somehow to combine with something. Um, but I think like on here, it's anything that might have a wing, you know, we can do a complimentary one or just, you know, whatever mirror image that might work. But they had used butterflies and flowers. I thought we would try the dragonfly and flowers since I thought that had the same shape on it. But um, that's how um, you can maybe just have some fun with it. If you happen to have butterflies and flowers or the dragonfly and flowers, it's something to maybe try a fun new mashup technique. 
All right, well, this is our, oh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of circle back to this stays on versus Memento too. If you use Memento on um, vellum, which I'll show you this right now, or even the window sheets, the, um, the ink just instantly smears. So I'll get this off. So if I would have said, well, I've got black, I'm just gonna try this. It just, you know, it just smears right down. And, you know, unless you heat set it or do some other things, sometimes that's not the best thing because we all are tempted to get that. And then I think if this does get a little wet, it would probably drip too. So um, just that's kind of my, my black ink preferences on that. All right, everybody, it was super quick today, but hopefully a fun technique that you might take a look through your stamps and give a try. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.